Howdy y'all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome to episode 25, part 13 of my Let's Play of Transport Fever 2. In the previous episode, we basically did a little bit of route planning, as well as adding a new in transporting loads of baked goods to the local towns. And hopefully, in this episode, we'll be able to finally complete this completion ta a competition task, as well as getting more money brought in. But, of course, we got a lot, we still have a lot of work to do. As you can see, our competition is still at 8,536 to the 10,652. That means we still have a lot of commodities to export. And I believe the ship that was supposed to bring and take out the commodities had left the map already. So it should be coming back any moment now. In the meantime, coal is still waiting to be picked up. Our cut diamond train was reverted to carrying tobacco leaves. Our gold train is fully loaded, and our coal train has yet to pick up any coal from the mines. Speaking of which, the A2 coal train has succeeded so much I think it's time to basically add some more wagons. We'll add a couple of extra open-topped wagons, giving them a capacity of 420 units. All the while, A train A3 is still waiting to pick up more coal bound for the steel mill. But transport is actually starting to go down? I don't get it. Richard Bay's export has basically has zero need for coal right now. And coal is only being transported to the steel mill? <sighs> Sometimes the industries in this game can be so odd. But anyway, a load of coal being brought in, and it will be loaded up, well, unloaded on the steel mill. A train of cut diamonds is waiting, to be waiting for a load of mined diamonds. Speaking of which... This train of 350 units needs to be greatly expanded to 420. At least our meat packing operation is still doing pretty well. There's still cattle being produced, and our cattle trains are still rolling in. We are only transporting 83% of the meat. Though so we have basically started operations delivering meat to Johannesburg. Speaking of which, where is that train? Up. Oh, it's being loaded up as we speak. Okay, let's see. Well, the station at Kamati Port is still going well with passengers. So is the Lorenzo Marquis Terminal. I still don't get it. How come we basically haven't been able to transport enough commodities to beat the British? Does Do they all need to be at the port at the same time? I don't really know. I mean, we're carrying 420 units of coal, gold, and cut diamonds each. So it should basically bring out when nice steady profit and a nice steady edge in the competition. I mean, the British are not even transporting a lot of stuff down to the harbor. From what I've seen, I think the railway is stuck. No trains are moving at oh, except for this one. It's good dirty wagons and dirty locomotive. That haven't basically gotten had a good look and or taken out of service for cleaning and basically an overhaul. Safe to say this railway, I believe, will need re need a lot of work. I mean there's fish waiting to be picked up here. But this Durban fishery is only producing fish to be picked up by rail. Ugh. I'm so confused. How can I transport more loads? Well, 
I guess it's probably time to basically connect to another gold mine. Let's see. There's one up here, and one here near, jo near Johannesburg. Well, I guess it's time to start off with another gold train. We're not using any catenary because we don't have any electric engines, I believe, for this map. So, we're going to build a track to go under the town and then connect it to the station on this end. 240 meters as usual and just connect it here. However, because of the platform, I need to basically have it on one side so I can add some cargo to things. Actually, could I actually stack on these platforms? Oh, no. Dang. Maybe I could place the small cargo terminal here? Or actually, I think I'll just realign the station right here. Alright. I guess I'll have to use the medium-sized buildings for this. Alright, these buildings will hold a maximum of 380 units, plus the 240 for the platform, so it should hold up a good amount of gold. And then, let's see. Convert this to an embankment to save on costs, and then connect here and turn this into a cutting no, it'll have to be a tunnel. Now, with the new gold mine track constructed, we can now start exporting gold to the, into this port. We'll have to use track one. And since this is actually going to be the second of gold, one of two gold trains, I'll have to convert this to train F1. I'll have to copy the text as well to save on typing time and convert trains this to F2 and get this to blue and have a full load of 10 minutes and it seems like yep no slip switch all right with that done we'll basically put this down and our competition went up to 9200 that is good now then let's see I'll have to clone the, this gold train and put it to work on the new gold train F2. Well, the engines are going to basically steam towards the docks. There's not even any goods on this train. The heck? <sighs> I hate doing it at times four because of the lag, but it's the only way to basically get the vehicles to basically get to work. And thankfully, now with the mine constructed, gold is now starting to be produced. And since it only has one destination, it should reach level two pretty soon. Richard Bay's export still needs gold to be brought in. Speaking of which, the cut diamond train has actually left with only 296 units. And that's totally okay. This train has 360 units of, cut, of mined diamonds. And that will basically produce a, a little bit more. Jeez. 
I mean, I have so much money, I don't even know what to do with it. The company went down to 23. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, down to 24 because one of my vehicles has made a profit of at least 10 million. We actually made over 16 million pounds in the last 12 months. Our value is at 731 million pounds. Our real estate is 21.2 million. Vehicle worth 324 million pounds. And our assets at 734 million pounds. 90 road vehicles, 8 trams, 33 trains, oldest vehicle 12 years, longest tr top thing for train at 232, 14,768 miles of tunnel, and 1,176 miles of bridges. I have, I, I'm surprised at how well my business is basically starting to grow. Speaking of which... This logging train is on its way, though I think it's best if I start delivering loads of lumber right now, so I can basically get machinery produced here. Which it already has. And machinery is now being loaded into my steam-powered wagons for their destinations. As this one is heading towards Victoria Street, which is located here in Standard. But it's only one unit of machinery, though. However, the level will soon increase soon enough, and more machinery will be produced that needs to be delivered. Now Johannesburg needs a new commodity, clothing. But, unfortunately though, we have no access to the clothing factory. Although we are delivering fish, machinery, meat, and baked goods. Machinery from the port. Every and everything else in between. But, ugh. We're kind of a bit of a... There's words here. In fact, we have a nearly full train of fish, and its highest profit was at 727, well, 7.27 million pounds. Okay, the diamonds are being produced, the diamonds are being cut, speaking of which, the gold train is on its way down, the gold train is on its way to pick up more. Now, gold train is still being loaded, and this diamond train is located nearing the town of Kamalti Port. So, it soon will arrive at the dockside. Hmm, it's gonna be a bit of a while before any of these deliveries basically impact the competition. So, I think I'm gonna cut this video right here, and I'll see you all in a moment once we are able to complete this task, because it's starting to become a bit of a burden for me. So, I'll see you all in just a moment. <laughs> And we're back. Now, with our company basically able to transport more goods to this port from the British, we are now entering the Second Boyer War. We need to get troops here to the battlefront near Newcastle. Fortunately, I set up a new route to deliver troops to from this annex here in Middlesbrough, next to this training base, to be taking these troops down to the battlegrounds. I'll have to get about 10 of these. Actually, yeah, 10 of these will do. I mean, sure, they're slow, but we gotta basically defend the Transvaal Republic. And repatriation. This time, Dutch workers want to travel back to Pretoria. Hmm. So basically, this time, now we have to deliver some people, deliver workers down to the port. Hmm. Well, it's about time anyway to get a new service started anyway.
we could at least earn one medal from this if we get this done. But we are actually going to delete this track once we start delivering once this com contract with delivering workers down to the port is finished. Just to make sure, this is going to be workers. Let's see. Okay, workers. Bringing them down to this harbor. Let's basically get a new train to service that. Well, let's basically use the PLM220 for this service, because it's only going to be a one-time thing. And for passenger wagons, we're going to basically use some of these new 1890s, 1895-era coaches. Add a brake coach in the rear. And let's put it to work on line 2, which is the temporary route that's being used to deliver those troops. Well, workers, so to speak. Even though it goes at 37 miles an hour, at least, however, this engine will be able to make up for it in speed. And since this is only a one-time thing, once the contract is completed, I'll be selling this train off. Turning this train around, and yep, there are people waiting to board this train to head down to the port, as it is an emergency. Speaking of which, there are people wanting to board these my buses to head down towards, well, the battlegrounds. But I'm turning these buses around so they can at least pick up their passengers. Thankfully, the road that leads to them there is doesn't have any grade crossings, so they won't have to worry about a train blocking their path. I also, at the same time, replaced many of the four, two axle coaches that were used on our local trains with the new three axle ones as they will provide a much better certain since we don't longer use them on the express trains. As for the express, we'll be, I basically replaced them with a teak variant of those coaches we use for our workers train. Composing of one baggage coach with three first class coaches, three third class coaches, and one brake coach. Thankfully, we could still deliver goods down to this harbor, which is great. So it's not just a temporary assignment, which is a good thing. Well, there's tons of workers waiting to pick them to ride this train. And once this train is fully loaded, this train will then take them down to the harbor. In fact, I'm going to extend it from max stop time from 10 minutes to infinite. Meaning it will not depart until the train is entirely loaded up. With that all being said and done, I think we have reached a good ending point for today's episode. So, if you enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on the on-site schedule. And, as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!